Today we're going to be looking at the JG Maker R1. This is a pretty interesting machine that was sent to me by JG Maker to try out. So let's get into it with the printer specs. The printer has a build volume of 230 by 230 by 250, which is a pretty good build size, especially compared to something else you'd see in this class, such as like the Ender 3. It's right on par with it. When it comes to print speed, we have 30 to 180 millimeters per second but JG Maker recommends running the printer somewhere around 60 to 80 millimeters per second. This printer isn't meant to print fast, but it does have good quality at the speeds that it does print at. And it prints in a wide variety of materials. This printer can support PLA, ABS, PETG, and TPU. That's because it supports a nozzle temperature at a max of 260 degrees Celsius. As for the bed, the max temperature it can get up to is 100 degrees Celsius, which means it's gonna be great for adhesion. In the box, it comes with a double-sided PEI magnetic bed sheet. This magnetic bed sheet works great. I honestly have had no problems with it. I will say whenever I first got it, I made sure to clean it down with some alcohol wipes just to make sure that I had the best adhesion possible. Another great thing at this price point is it does have a dual gear direct drive extruder with a metal throat tube. That metal throat tube is going to help make sure that the extrusion is consistent and you don't have as many clogs. Going on with the build quality, it was nice to see that there was a dual Z-axis lead screw with dual motors. A lot of the times you'll see dual Z-axis lead screws, but they don't have the two motors. It's just one driving both of them. So I was glad to see that this did have two motors, allowing it to be more consistent. The printer also features automatic bed leveling and allowing you to have baby stepping, which I thought was pretty consistent. And we'll talk more about that a little later. The extruder also supports two cooling fans on both sides, which is going to help with printing at higher speeds, though this printer is not really built for higher speeds. And lastly, as far as printer specs go, the only other thing I wanted to point out was it does have a storage box, which is something you don't see on a lot of printers at this price point. And I was nice to see that this was included. Not a deal breaker, but it is a nice to have. So now that we know the specs, let me go over some of the things I like about this machine. First off, the aesthetic is really nice. I think it gives off Elegoo vibes, especially from their Neptune series line. From the type of plastic they use, to the coloring, to the patterns, I just feel like it gives a good aesthetic for this printer. And they also added a lot of other features, like the automatic bed leveling. It's super nice. I will say I would like to see some sort of manual bed leveling as well. For instance, this machine is like others where there isn't any knobs on the bottom, so it relies very heavily on the automatic bed leveling in order to get that perfect first layer. That being said, the baby stepping or Z offset is very nice. Like the, the way that they implemented that where you can actually tram it with a little piece of laminate that they include in the box. I thought that was a really nice touch. And of course they guide you through that pretty well with the video that they have on their YouTube page. So if you've never done that process before, it is available if you wanna check it out on JG Maker's YouTube. I think that the printer software is pretty easy to use and it has a good UI. It just takes some getting used to. I think the load and unload options on this software is really well done in the UI. As well as the ability to pick the print file, it's pretty straightforward. I do wish the text was a little bit bigger on the screen though, and maybe that's just because I have really bad eyes. Last thing I wanted to point out that I really liked about this printer was the ability to use a full-sized SD card. You don't really see that too often, but the interesting thing is they actually shipped it with a micro SD card in a SD card adapter. I'm sure this had to do something to do with cost cutting, but I did find that kind of weird that, you know, for this to be a very unique like SD card slot, you would find on a printer at this price point, the fact that they shipped it with the standard micro SD card was an interesting choice. So let me go ahead and get into the things I don't like about this printer. The first being there isn't really much third party slicer support right out of the box. Of course, I could go in and make my own profiles in other slicers, but for the most part, I just use the JG Create software that came with the printer. I would like to see JG Create come out with some slicing profiles for just like a vanilla version of Cura or Prusa Slicer, or maybe even Orca Slicer. It's growing in popularity these days. And quick thing I wanted to say about JG Create, it seems pretty well done. It's just basically their own version of Cura, but there isn't any marketplace support for the Cura apps, which is kind of a bummer. The only other thing that I noted as a con here, and this just may be because the price point, but I feel like there was a lot of corner cut with build quality 
And that's interesting because you have some things that they did really right, like the direct drive extruder or the dual Z axis with the dual motors. But then, you know, if I turn this around, you can see that there's like glue showing and an exposed board. And maybe this is okay, but personally, I feel that if I accidentally bump this, I could destroy that, that one little piece there and my machine is nothing but a paperweight. Of course, that's maybe a gamble that you just have to take at this price point, but it would be nice to see this enclosed or just, you know, polish just a little bit more. Overall, I really like this printer. Uh, I think it's been fun to print on. It's super reliable. Can't really say a lot of bad things about it. If you're into tinkering, this is definitely one you want to look at. Um, if you're wanting to print right out of the box, it's close. It's close to that. Uh, it does take some getting used to. The display is a little interesting. Um, it works really well. It's very responsive, uh, but the layout took me some getting used to for sure. It's not something I've used before in the past, but I like it. It's a good machine. If you want to pick up the JG Maker R1 yourself, you can look down in the video description below. I've got some links for it for you. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.